Hello, and welcome to a brand new day of free-to-play here on Magic the Gathering Arena. Get the dish on the latest with me, Lord Rumfish. So, in part one, I talked about the new draft methodology I've developed called Podcats. Uh, if you missed out on that, you should head back to part one, watch me draft up this deck, and I talk all about it. Um, this is part two. Uh, we're going to be taking this deck into the field to go ahead and play some games. I had to split it into two parts because the video was too long. Anyway, let's get in there. Up against Cloaker. There's no A, so it could be Clocker, but... Alright, we've got both colors of mana. Hard to complain. On it goes first. Blue. Blue and what, though? Blue-red. Convoke. Could be scary. Okay, could just be like Spells deck, too. Go ahead and get down Rayov. Stasis Field. Protection from colorless or the color of my choice. Huh. I can actually save Ray out. That could be a blowout if they're not expecting it. Zada. So this is whenever uh, you cast instant or sorcery, it only targets Zada copies for each other creature you could target. Uh, unless they have... Okay. But why would you do this? You've tapped them both down. Why would you do this? Oh, I could play the Seraph, but I still feel like blowing them out in combat with this Angelic Intervention and getting rid of the Stasis is the best. So they must not have realized that they'd have to tap their attacking creature in order to make that play. Okay, transformed it. Protection from blue is going to be good here. Blue. How do you like them apples? Pretty doggone good. And I can do Quintorius at the beginning of the end step. Let's go ahead and come in. Start flipping the script. I don't have another card to feed Quintorius, but I don't know if I need to. The opponent's just in big trouble now. Maybe they're going to go ahead and flip the token. So I could just take the token with the Intercessor and it would be gone forever. And I think I like that. Zada's not that dangerous if it's by itself. Let's go ahead and come in. I'll keep Rehab for a second. I'm going to trade it off. Nope. Okay, go to 11. I got Vigilance on Quintorius. Now, I'm, I have to assume they have a lot of combat tricks with the way they've built their deck. But they're low on creatures. Oh, no. Oh, that's not good. 
was not good at all. Maybe I can power them out. Maybe I can just go ahead and finish them out somehow here. That could be helpful. I wonder if they have a counter spell. If they do, it'll trigger Quintorius because Chandra will be in the graveyard. Alright, I'm doing it. Counterspell be damned. It's fine. Alright. So the Seed Shark has a pretty decent block on the 3 2. Otherwise, everything else is doing pretty well here. You know what? I'm going to keep back Quintorius. I don't want them to double block him. They can uh, block something with the Seed Shark, but it doesn't trade. You're going to go to five? Here we go. I think Quintorius can cast Chandra again by sacrificing a spirit and paying three and tapping. I don't want to look at the card right now because I don't want to attract attention to it. The opponent can see when you highlight your own cards. So I'd rather just act like I'm thinking about... Yeah, okay, that works. <laughs> Game two, up against Greedy. Okay, go first. That is an expensive hand, but the mana looks good. A little scary. I know I've got a low curve in this deck, though. These happen to be some of the expensive drops. It could be a bad draw if all I get is land, but at least then I'll be able to play my spells. There are a lot of two drops in here. When the mana is this perfect in the open hand, it's really hard to send it back. And when you go first, it can forgive a little clunkiness. Well, no two drops so far. Could be in for a rough time. Black red. Aristocrats. Sacrifice. Could have more than two colors as well. It's harder to pull off when you're not green. This card card. Hmm. Can I afford to let go of a land here? Oh no, that's a rough one. Maybe I just drop the fearless scald. Might be safer. Well, I'll go ahead and get it down. Sort of wants the future. I think the gig is up and the opponent realizes I'm an equipment deck here. Here's the knight. Here's a couple of bodies. I'm not really interested in blocking because they have, could have combat tricks. I would rather just equip up and run past their black creatures. And I have Vigilance. Which means I'm also there to block their black creatures. So. I could try to leave two mana up to kill one of my creatures, but then I'll just equip the other one. It's only two to equip the sword. Alright, let's get the sword on something here. Let's start with the token. It's on there.
Yeah, no blocks for you. Alright, survey all. I would like the skittering surveyor. Um Yeah, I'd like SRAM to stay in the deck. So this is fine. This is fine. I will also play the sanctifier. Okay, they found their third land. They've got the aristocrats thing going. Can they find a payoff card? Or something to destroy an artifact? All done. Now, is that just a random three drop for them, or are they running some equipment too? Let's play the Surveyor. Let's take action. I will go ahead and get a planes here. Let's see. Deals comma damage to a player or battle. Create a treasure token. Okay. Doesn't have protection from red, but Menace will get it past Valduk. Treasure, that would let me play the Furnace Toast Charger next turn. So, I don't know if I actually need any more lands for the rest of this game. Now, if I had found a two mana or less spell, which I don't have many of, the best one would be like Rouse Reinforcements, then I'd go ahead and mill it to use with the sword. Am I looking at some kind of a bug here? Why is it showing a sanctifier in the graveyard and one in play? Yeah, that's a bug. That is a bug. Alright, it has to be a non-creature, non-land card. I don't have one of those. But I do have a Furnace Toast Charger. And I think I'm going to go ahead and pressure the opponent. I might have been able to attack with the Surveyor there. They wouldn't have been able to make that play in that case where they go to one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't, don't really want the planes. I could play Quintorius and Tarkir Dune Shaper. Just be nice if Quintorius had something down there to uh, make a 3-2 with. Okay, Karsus Depth Guard. That actually gives them blocks, unless they do something like that. Okay. Well, there we go. We 
are up against Uruzu57. This looks keepable. Alright, beat stick, sanctifier. Start attacking. Oh man. There's the sword. There's the sword. Play a green. And a black. So protection from black might matter. Okay, so if I equip this, I'm going to get a treasure token. And I can come in with menace. And then I can play this. Draw two, discard one. I'll probably find another land. Yep. Definitely did. Alright. I'm just trying to use some aggression here, unless they leave up the blockers. They do leave up the blockers. I can Angelic Intervention. Is that enough, though? No, they've got two colors. That's not actually enough in this case. So, get down the sword. No attacks. They're playing it defensive for a second here. We'll see if they have answers to my creature or the sword. Green does have ways if they have any in the deck. Ramp. Can also muck with battles. Don't care about that. Okay. Red, red. Whip. That worked. Alright. I'm in on the invasion. Protection from green. My face. Yeah, go ahead. Start trying to get Ravi. Oh. Oh, double strike? Forget the invasion. No more mountains, please. Uh, yeah. More counters? Do you want to make Rayav bigger? No, just you. Just you. Here, protection from color. Let's get a counter. Oh, protection from color. Let's, uh... Pulled one off of it. Forgot about that. Took the sword off. I did it wrong. I could go ahead and flip this, but I'd rather have the mana for the Alabaster Host Intercessor. Okay, we'll see if the protection from colorless messes me up here. Okay, Doombringer.
That gets you Ravi Singer. Only matters if my creatures die. Otherwise she's just a 3-3 three, three flyer. And they're all done. We're up against Sanseo. Oh, no red. No red. Well, it's not a terrible hand, even if it's just white mana. I'll give it a shot. Omenhawker. Hopefully they won't be able to use that. Let's start with the lifelinker. Well, that's strange. They choose not to attack either. Very odd. Guardian does not flicker my own creature. I mean, it doesn't flicker their creature. Hmm. Very odd. I still think I play the Guardian here. Core Halberd. Omenhawker. Very strange. Blue White is usually knights. There's a knight. this. I'm actually going to discard the Dune Shaper. Okay. I'll come in on the invasion with the flyer and I'll play Sram to maybe draw a uh, card when I play the sword. If I find another land I could play the Sanctifier or I could equip the sword. What? They've got a sword of once in future? This isn't fair. I hate the matchmaker. I, l I don't mean to rant, but there's something deeply, deeply wrong with the matchmaker where it always gives you this <laughs> mirror match. Yeah, whatever. Three and discard a card. They actually have a spell to blow up my sword. They have a spell to blow up my sword. 
How about that? Well... How about this? Okay, they can move their equipment around, but they'll still lose out on having this 3-3. Three, three. I don't know if they can come back from that. I'm not going to let them know I have Chandra. Here, here's Kite Sail. Just equip it to one of these. Okay, so if I burn out the champion and I burn out whatever they put the equipment on, they should be pretty close to dead. It doesn't give protection from red. Shouldn't have attacked with that Omen Hawker. You need every blocker you can get. Sunder? Not that exciting. Not that big of a deal. We're up against Rich Walter. Looks like it plays. Wouldn't mind a creature on two. Oh, there we go. I'll hold this one back. It's special. Historian can come on down, though. Here's the sword. I mean, I guess I hang back to block against a 1-1 lifelinker. Three colors. We're looking at Grixis. Okay. Well. A couple ways to go about this. Still think I play the Guardian here. Hang back on defense. They've got the front foot on the tempo. 
You want to force them to spend their cards to try to find a way through. Okay, they're doing a big tap out to try to shatter the source. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. A couple ways I could do this. I could play Sram and play the Bane Splitter to see if I can draw into a land that way. But I think it's better to use the Invasion of Mercadia. See if I can find a land that way. Quinde can go. Alright. Here's Sram. Do I want to tap out to put pressure on the Invasion of Mercadia? say no. I'm going to keep playing defense here. I know the champion can get in, but letting their ground creatures get in is a different matter. Ouch. That is a lot of damage. Let's see. Sword. And I guess we'll equip up Sram. In the turn there. Next turn I've got Chandra. I'm going to take a beating. Give me a break. Okay, you all killing the charger will let Chandra stick around to at least distract them. So Chandra can deal with the rest of their board. Something. When I say burn, you burn. Spell spear. Dangerous card. So, holding off on the Iker Drinker gives them fewer options. Now, let's see. If I go with the Bane Splitter and the Sword on the Historian, then I can flip the battle. And that would give me a blocker. Then I can move this to the flame right. And... 
Chandra can minus one. To a crisp should be enough. And we'll see if they draw something completely busted that triggers their uh Gitaxian Spellstalker. No, it's a land. See, I don't have a lot of instants and sorceries in this deck. I think it's better to just plus her for mana. I can pay the ward too. I'm in with the sword. Get rid of a mountain. Move the sword to the intercessor. Call it a turn. Zephyr Singer. Okay, so what I need to do is threaten lethal. Chandra's not big enough to kill the Zephyr Singer. So I have one I have eight mana on the table. That is enough to play the Scald and activate the Flame Rite. I'm going to play the Scald first. And give the biggest thing they have double strike. That'd be you. Then I use the Flame Rite. Discard a card. Minus Chandra for two. To burn out one of their blockers. Your toast. And swing with everything. We are up against Rayo. Go first. Looks all right. There's some land. Doesn't look like I'm going to need to plane cycle. Bane splitter. Okay, okay. They don't want to block. Okay. Let's see. Just play a knight here, right? 
Go a little wide. Now they want to make this trade. Actually, do I care? I mean, their two 1-1s one -ones could make a pretty good block against one of my other creatures later. Um... Could also try to wait until I get the Intercessor to just exile the Thalid out of the way. Nah. Let's gain the life while we got it. Okay, they play a 3-3 lifelinker. Take action. Go ahead and find a planes. Play it. Play a beat stick. No attacks. If they want to come in with the Aetherborn, I will... I will race them. Plus, I might be able to exile it next turn if I get a land. Or I could exile this thing. Which sounds better, maybe. Man, they get to keep this card even if I get rid of the Hoarding Broodlord. Kind of a bomb. I could be in big trouble if I uh, don't hit my land drop here. I mean, I can get in and make a treasure token by giving Menace. So that that's not nothing, but... I mean, it's probably like a removal spell or something, right? In which case, should I hold off on killing the Broodlord? Should I wait until they burn their removal spell? It was probably what they just went and got, is a removal spell. I can take seven. Yeah, I'm going to hold off for a turn. If they have a discard effect, I guess I'll just concede. I bet it's removal. Come on. It's got to be removal. You went and you found the best removal card in your deck. Unless you have another absurd bomb like Hoarding Broodlord. Play it. No, I still have the one in exile over there. Oh, it's a Halo Charge scab. They're getting the final flourish back. That's what they're doing. Okay, that is a bit of a problem. Let's see, I guess I hold the mountain. Equip this up. So it can still crash in.
kill the lifelinker. I've got to get them to use their stupid spell. Because I can't let them hit the intercessor with it. Mind stinger, gotta go. Are they never going to do it? If they have this removal spell open, I can't get the Broodlord out of the way with the Intercessor. Please tell me this means you're going to use your removal spell. Actually, I guess it's too late either way. Okay. They had the removal for the intercessor and they Yeah, that's that's not We are up against Hackrobat. Mm, looks pretty good. There's the sword again. Maybe I should have played SRAM there. Still can, it's just not as mana efficient. They're holding mana open. Well, let's see if they got a trick I could blow out. Okay. Uh, sure. That's fine. That invasion. That could have made a good block if they had not made that attack. Block this? I don't think I care.
Okay. I'd like to draw a land. That was not a land. But the spell in my graveyard can give protection from whites to my creature that's enchanted. And that can get me in here. I mean, they could just throw away their Lancer. Yeah. Just throw them away. Okay. Okay, protection from blue, so they'd have to block with a uh, white creature. I mean, I guess I need to set up with uh, flying here. Guess that's what I need to do. Okay, let's go ahead and draw a card, see what we get. Planes, that's nice. Alright. Come in with the Seraph. Okay. Very tiresome, but you're gonna run out of stuff. Don't care. Do not care. Oh wait. They only left blue creatures up. That works. Oh yeah, Rouse can go. Do the intervention. Target you, protection from light. And go ahead and get down Quinde. That's fine. What does this turn into? Power and toughness equal the number of creatures you control. Um... How about... No. Just no. Definitely want to get this attack in. Oh, did I just miss lethal? I guess so. That's fine, though.
We are up against N G U H C two. Uh, go first. Whew. Not the best. So much equipment and no creatures. Can I? Do I have to send this back? I think I have to send this back. This looks okay. I think I'll send back Quinde. the seraph oh no land am I gonna have to plane cycle you ay 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 I guess I should plane cycle This is rough. Not how my uh, opening is supposed to go in this deck. Okay. Play Sram and Rayav. Yeah. Whenever it attacks, so I kind of need to do it now. Best jumpers. All right. Man, do I do the flyer or the sanctifier? Man, efficiency, right? Alright, so what does this do? Exile it, put two counters on something. It's three because of the Kami. Ticks missed their mana, though. Need another red if I'm gonna do Chandra. But I need another mana in general if I wasn't gonna do Chandra, so... I can move the equipment and play the Sanctifier. Okay. I have to find protection from white. They'll get rid of that at some point. Do they have two pieces of removal? Are they just going to do another chump block here? They're gonna do a real block. I mean, I'm okay with that too. They're having a long think there. 
They did all that setup and then they weren't sure if they wanted to do it. Okay, um, so now if I played Chandra, I'd still be at risk of her being attacked by the 3-3, three, three, and I don't want to chump block, so... Let's just do this. Play the lifelinker, get its power up to 4. See if they'll flip that token on their own. I can kill it with Chandra. I mean, another option, I guess, is uh, she could hit the battle and their biggest creature. care about two. Defector. Okay, I think I think this is gonna be worth it. Well someone had to save the day. Let's see, I can actually put her down to one and just flip the invasion and keep the Alabaster House to block for her. Maybe that would be better. And if I don't flip the defector now, they won't have the 3-3 three, three to attack with. So you come on in. And come on in. That is fine. Man, I really need this Kami off the table, don't I? Every card in their deck is just like giving them plus one counters. Just galore. We can do this together. Yeah, there's Quinde. See how good their draw is here. I mean, if they have another amazing card here, I'm... Oh! Um, yeah, I think I can concede there. Yeah, we're all done. Final boss battle, Andre. No white. Um, uh, Mulligan. Keep this. Send back Quintorius. Find you later.
I guess this is the historian playing here. I'm gonna burn out the historian? Okay, whatever. This is like the, one of the weakest cards in my deck. You're welcome to him. Let's see. Um, yes, I play the Seraph here. And then go for the invasion next turn. They did not find a land. Invasion of Kaladesh, Hangar Scrounger. They're looking for blue. They didn't get it. Um. Let's see, do I go like Invasion Sram? Or do I go like Knight of the New Coalition? I feel like it's Knight here, actually. Oh, they're in trouble. Let's get this invasion flipped. Tark here can go. Cool. Uh, it seemed like they didn't have any removal there. Now the funny thing is, I could flip the uh, Chiron back into the battle just to uh, discard and draw two, which is slightly tempting, but the Chiron Flame Rite is such a powerful card that uh, if they don't find something, I'm just going to win the game here next turn. There you have it. Next turn, play Sram, discard the land, give everything the plus one, plus one in haste, and make it two one ones and... I don't know if that kills them for sure. Um, this puts out four power attacking. This would be four. So that's eight plus three and three is another six, which would be 14. Um, yeah, yeah, that's lethal. That'd be 20 damage exactly. Well, you can tell I'm a little rusty. Uh, definitely made some play mistakes, but um, overall, I'm very happy with this draft. Um, yeah, anytime you hit seven wins, that's like, that's a special medal, right? What you're really trying to do is make enough gems back that you can, you know, play another one. So you want to get about four or five wins, uh, consistently. You can't always get seven. Even the best people in the world don't. So, but yeah. I wasn't setting out to make like a uh, low to the ground uh, tempo-ish kind of deck, you know, using equipment and stuff. But I kept my mind open right throughout the whole draft process. I was keeping my colors open, my mana open, my options open. And uh, it wasn't when I saw Rayav, it was when I saw Sram in pack three. That's when I asked, do I need these other colors? Or could I just make a white-red equipment deck with what's, you know, facing me? And it worked. You know, you saw firsthand there were some powerful cards like Chandra and Quintorius. And Sword of Once and Future. And for that matter, Sram actually was an all-star in this deck. But even aside from all of that, just the other creatures with some uh, equipment they pulled their weight got the win. And uh, that's part of what Podcats is about, right? Your first few picks, you focus on the early part, where you're looking at potential and defense and card advantage. Later, you're keeping your mind open, you're seeing what you've already taken. And you start looking for tempo and synergy. And later in the draft, this deck developed into a Tempo Synergy deck. Um, you know, it, it's not the kind of thing where you take SRAM, pack one, pick one, and say, I am going to force. And 
equipment deck. I'm going to force a, a vehicle deck. No. But when it lines up, you have to be paying attention. Anyway. So, if you like anything I've uh, had to say or just had some fun along the way, yeah, you can give me a like, a subscribe. Checking out the other videos is the big one. And until next time, never stop honing your critical thinking and empathy.